it's a true state If we spend more time lifting each other Good afternoon, good afternoon, good afternoon. This is DJ CEO, and I am right here live with some some people that are looking to do uh, wonderful things here in Florida. They've been doing wonderful things here in Florida for a long, long time, but they want to do things wonderfully uh, the, the the right way. They, they want to restore a part of their lives that has been uh, removed and they are just trying to get back into the stream of things so to speak I have in the studio with me right now today uh, Pastor Clifford Tyson with the Voters Right Restoration and he is here with with a, a, a couple of young ladies that are going to talk about um, the things that, that they have to contend with just to get their right to vote go ahead Pastor Good. Good afternoon First of all, uh, my name, as he said, is Pastor Cliff Tyson. Uh, the state of Florida, and, and if you don't mind, I'm going to give you just what I give them. I go into the prisons. The state of Florida recognized me as A475744. And when I say that, when I speak to other inmates, they take an ear because I've been there in the situation that they're in now. I did some time, I made some mistakes in my life, I uh, paid my dues to society. And when I got out, I tried to do the proper way of getting my rights restored by going through the process. It took me from 2007 all the way to 2017. And even in 2017, I was told I was going to have to Make sure I answer the phone when they called. Don't change my address. And when the gov governor called, I would have to travel to Tallahassee for a five-minute meeting for them to decide if they were going to restore my rights back. It may sound easy, but the average inmate, when they get out, they only have less than $100. They may not even have a place to stay. So to me, that was more suppression of the voting rights. So... I finally came to a point to where if I couldn't vote, I was going to encourage others to vote. Now, what's happening now mm -hmm. is... Are you waiting on Reverend Willie Dixon? Uh, he can come in if he uh, like. Okay, okay. Come on in, Reverend Dixon. Just just come on in. Yeah, because Reverend Keep Dixon was one of the people who, who uh, got his back. Got okay. his rights back. Okay. Come on in, Reverend and Dixon. And it was very important to me. He can sit there. That that happened. Okay. And so, uh, matter of fact, I remember Reverend Dixon, we used to go into the prisons together. Uh -huh. And he could uh -huh. attest to you that Just when put him here, Reverend Dixon. we was with A. Brown Ministries, mm -hmm. we told these guys, everything that they, they're doing now yes. is a modern-day prison. Prisons are privatized. Mm -hmm. Right? Privatized, and, yes, and sir. They privatize. And, and they don't want... They're taking all the trades out, mm -hmm. so they want you to get out, come back. Yes. There are prisons built in the middle of cane fields. Yes. Air-conditioned prisons. Yeah. Right. And, and the sugar industry is making a killing. So when I go into the institutions, I tell them that's not what we were made for. Okay. And so when we get out, as I've been out, Reverend Dixon's been out. Yes. It's possible to stay out. And so when they brought, brought these rights back, it not only had to pass, it had to pass by 64%. I had not voted for 42 years. Wow. Since I was at Florida a &M University. Wow. Reuben Askews, I think, was the governor at that time. Okay. So I voted the first time this year in 42 years. Mm -hmm. And what was amazing, when I got my, got my rights back, I, and I had, I got them back through mm -hmm. the the voters' right amendment. Okay, it wasn't through my through my uh, trials of trying over seven, seven, ten years to get them back. It, the people spoke. The people spoke. Okay, and when the people spoke, I got up that morning, the first election, the primary with the Cyrus Green. Proud. Cyrus Green is a community a, 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 a center. Community in center. Tampa. 
took my five-year-old grandson mm-hmm. and my wife because I wanted my five-year-old grandson to be a part, to see something. Historical. Historical. That my grandpa voted, and you carry this mantle on. Absolutely. And when they gave me my ballot, I literally cried when they told me you can go to that booth there. I cried. I can imagine. And when they asked why you're crying, my wife told him it's been 42 years. Wow. And I get emotional even talking about it now. And not soon after that, they came out with this, what we call a modern day poll tax. Yes. And this tax to, that's going to allow us to, they give them the right to want to take our, our voting our rights vote. back yes. after the people spoke. So let me ask you this. You said that you, uh, um, you, 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 you registered to vote in 1996, 97. What, what, I, tell, I, give me those I, timelines. My last time I voted was in 1978. 1978. And then in 19... 2019. Okay. So, but, but in 2005, you tried to get... I, I applied, give me that. I applied for my rights in 2007. 2007. I got released from prison in 1983. 1983, okay. I applied for my rights in 2007. What happened between 1983 and 2007? You just didn't, that you couldn't get your rights back at that time. Well, at one point, I think one of the governors had automatic restoration. I actually thought our rights was back when we got released. I got you. Right? Okay. And then come to find out that I had to apply. Right. I applied in 2007, and I thought it was just an uh, easy process. Applied, went online, applied for clemency. Okay. Called and checked in 2008. They told me, we're just working on cases in 2004, five. You know, every year I call, they're, they're like they're three, three years. They were three or four years behind. Behind. And so finally in 2016, they called me and I called and they said, your case is in the district of field. Okay. At our field office. So I say, well, is that a local office? Is it someplace I can go who I can contact? They wouldn't give me that information. They said, they'll contact you. Okay. All the way to 2017, same thing. They'll contact you. And so I ended up getting a traffic infraction of driving with my lights off. Okay. Ticket. Gotcha. Then my lights were off. And and uh, a ticket. Three weeks later, I get a letter from the clemency board that I was no longer... Uh, no longer uh, eligible for my rights uh, because of, of that ticket. So all those years went to naught, and I hadn't even went to court yet. So I called them, and they told me, said, well, if you get a certified court document saying that the, that the uh, case has been dismissed, a non-process, you still consider it got that went down to circuit court the court dismissed it because of the situation they dismissed it right it ended it even hindered me from going back into the prison because they put me on the list to go to an institution and i got a pen number but they denied me because of that that ticket mm-hmm. so those two things happened simultaneously okay so yeah i went on I, I know it's, it's, it sounds crazy, Reverend Dixon, but, <laughs> but this what happened. You, but you got the opportunity. I got the opportunity to vote. to vote. Yes, sir. And you voted in this most I, recent in most recent election. election, the mayor and city council election. Yes, sir. Very, very good. Now, Reverend Dixon, if I if you don't mind, let, let me bring in uh, Reverend Willie Dixon. Uh, let me just tell you, he is one my fraternity brother, member of Kappa Alpha Psi, mm. but also is 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 a, a man that had to have his uh, rights restored. Reverend Dixon, you want to share your story with us? Uh, first of all, I want to say I am A015536, uh, a number that I got twice. Come closer to and, the uh, mic for me. The first time when I got out, uh, I uh, automatically got my rights to vote. Miss Alice Ragdale, I didn't have to apply. Okay. But then later, uh, I caught another case. I went back. Okay. And uh, then uh, I got a, this was during the time when uh, Governor Bob Graham was there. Okay. And uh, I got my rights restored without the ability to own a firearm. 
And what I tell most ex-offenders, if you around someone with a firearm or with a bullet, it's a law they call constructive possession of a firearm. You can get up to $15,000 fine, up to 15 years of probation, but many of them don't know that. But nevertheless, uh, wow. I went I, I went before uh, Governor Scott mm-hmm. uh, uh, two years ago when he was governor, and he wanted to know why I wanted uh, to have a, a firearm. I said, not that I want to have a firearm, but I want to have the right to own to one. Own if I, so I, and I told him why. I said, if my, if my wife had a firearm and the police come in there looking for anything and I'm in the house, I can get 15 years. He said, that's a good reason. He granted it. But uh, that same day, so many people uh, uh, were denied because they don't know the law. Right. And, they don't know and one thing I was just I was concerned about, uh, they will not violate your rights. If for a misdemeanor, and that's why I was looked at you funny when you say you had a traffic ticket, and a traffic ticket is, is a misdemeanor unless you're a habitual driver, and then they change it to a felony. Okay. But uh, but but you got to know the law in order to circumvent these things because right. uh, when Pam Oil was uh, supervisor of election, I got a certified letter saying, "Oh, you can't vote." So I raised so much saying. <laughs> anyway, she told me to go back, and I showed them that my rights had been restored. Been restored. Then I got another certified letter that I can vote, and I have voted in every election since I've been been out since 1979. Wow. And I would have been out this coming November uh, for 40 years. Yeah. One, one thing I want to say, Reverend Dixon is right, and I yeah. do know the law, mm-hmm. and they did. I did have a habitual. Okay, now. And that's okay. why they made it a third degree felony. Okay. But my point was, I had not been convicted and went to court on that yet when I got the letter mm-hmm. from them. It was like, okay, we ain't got to deal with him. Right. Because uh, he done got a ticket but see, and got discharged. But see, really, they could not do that legally because you cannot be a conv- uh, be, uh, uh, wave of any rights or uh, uh, kept from using any of your rights if you have not been convicted of a crime it was pending that's, you know? and, and was that was pending. my argument right. so, and that was my argument with right. them and you know I got so frustrated in that phone call because the person was saying well they say you gotta apply because you gotta start over it was so disheartening mm-hmm. and I did have a contact person right. who was helping me with the clemency but they would not they started getting to the point they wouldn't let me get through to her anymore. I got you. Uh, but let me share something with you. See, uh, when uh, Charlie Chris became governor, uh, and I and I, through our nonprofit, the Coach Foundation, we assist people in getting their rights restored. Right. And I called up and uh, and they and they had uh, about two thousand people on the waiting list. Right. And I wouldn't know what, but the man that I talked to, he said, yeah. But uh, they transfer everybody. See, I'm the only person working in there. See, that's old trickology. That's old trick. Oh, one guy to handle two thousand cases. cases. But see, I mm-hmm. said this because I was a paralegal uh, in the Department of Correction. I said, why not certify some nonprofits in order to process some of these applications? I said, if we were able to file a uh, petition for inmates who were incarcerated, right. we should have the ability, you know, to. Uh, to have the, the, the application. And every institution, they can have the classification officer to do that paperwork. Right. But see, this is it. Governor Scott, he came in, and uh, first of all, he did away with, with, uh, with parole. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And they knew, or uh, they assumed that most of the voters would be Democrats. Democrats. So then that's when they came right. and changed the law. They changed the law. And then, and, you know, when... Uh, yeah, uh, Governor Ron DeSantos. He just followed. He just followed because he want to get elected another term. Absolutely, that's his political but, party. But they don't know that uh, there are just as many other folks who would vote Republican. That's wow. Right. Well, Pastor Tyson, before we come back to you, let me bring this young lady in who has a story to tell as well. Introduce yourself and tell us your story. My name is Virginia Anderson, and I've lived in Tampa. All my life, I am here to support Pastor Tyson. I do have my voting rights, and I do vote. But I have two nephews that has been, well, one is incarcerated Mm -hmm. now, and one is out. And he wants to vote, but he can't vote. And I told him he needs to register. 
So now I'm going to bring him in with Pastor Tyson mm-hmm. so he can walk him through everything that he needs to know. Okay. Does and he have any restitution to pay? Yes. Mm-hmm. Okay. But let me share this. Yes, sir. From January to June, every person had an opportunity to go and register to vote. But in Hillsborough County, less than 100 people took that opportunity. And we, I know we got at least 10,000 ex-offenders in this area. Mm-hmm. So we are trying to help people that won't help themselves. I told them that last night right. in the Passes on Patrol meeting. I said, uh, why are we doing more for you than you're doing for yourself? See, they got to get off there, get on right. and do and, and work and, for themselves. Absolutely. Exactly. Absolutely. Exactly. And, and see, and, 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 and this, is, this is the problem. Mm-hmm. We still have a mindset of people who are thinking, what's the use of voting? Our votes don't count anyway. Yes. And I've heard a lot of that. I've heard a lot of it from guys who've gotten out. Oh, the the electoral, your car, say, listen. Uh, but I heard something on, uh, I think Joe Madison said, or either, he said, if, if voting wasn't important, mm-hmm. <laughs> why are they so... Hell, eager, he'll been on. He'll been on mm-hmm. suppressing it if it wasn't important. If it wasn't important. Right. And yeah. so I'm speaking to my daughter in that this is a big deal for me. It may not help me, but that 1.4 million, those yeah. people went out and voted for me yeah. to get my rights back mm-hmm. because I had, I had literally gave up after mm-hmm. they told me I had to start back over. Mm-hmm. I'm 63 years old. Right. So I'm like, so I'll get my rights back at what? 70, 71 wow. through their process. Yeah. But I was able to get them back about four months after they denied me. Yeah. No, no, about a year and a, year and a half after they denied me. I'm going to take that back. Right. So, so now I'm, you think I'm not going to take advantage of what our people or what, and when I say our people, the people, the voice of the people who went out and voted to restore. You paid your dues to society. That's what they tell you. Mm-hmm. I did my time, worked on people's property, worked on people's street, and then I get out, and then you tell me I still owe you money? That, like, 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 that's in the hood. Right. Bre- Reverend Dixon, it, 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 let's say if I owe you $100, right? Uh-huh. He come at his $100, mm-hmm. but he beat, he, we fight for the $100, right? Yeah. In the hood, you ain't going to beat me, and I pay you too. Uh-huh. Am right. I correct? Ain't that how I go? I, I, I ain't gonna come beat you, <coughs> and, and he still owe me money, mm-hmm. it, right? Is, is Michelle, so Michelle thing, Williams still out there? I think so. So my thing is, I want to try to get her in here. My my thing I is, see this, Ray brother Daryl, is 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 we've paid our dues to society. The people voted that we okay. can have that. I right. think she's still at the. Uh, if she's yeah, yeah bring and her so, bring her over. Uh, why should we have to continue? To go back and count all the jelly beans in the jar. And that's basically what we're doing now. That's but, where we but, are now. But now, you know, over in Orlando, they found a way to uh, uh, allow those fines to be uh, converted into uh, community service or whatever. See, the state attorney can do what they oh, want to do. Oh, Orlando came up with a with a, a, a plan. A plan. Yeah. yeah. But uh, so far, they... Oh, oh. Hey. Hey, this is going to go nationally. They're doing a documentary on me. Okay. Uh, but that's because of this. I'm one of the 10 that we saw online. Yeah, we still live. We okay. live, brother. All right, now let me say this too now. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Pastor. We need to find Tyson. a way. We need to God find bless. a way to motivate those who uh, who uh, have not. Who have not. Vote. Yes. You see, and those who, have, who can't vote, they thank can you. get out and. and if, she, uh, if, she, if she has the time. And knock on doors, mm-hmm. see, because uh, if if you got if you got a 1.4 million, as they say, that that cannot vote, uh, I think they can work to help those who can vote and overturn any election, so that mm. you get a new legislative body. Yes, because see, the legislative body now they're not going to do anything that's going to affect them. So we uh, we can we can change the system. But uh, but uh, it's gonna just take the people coming together as one with one voice, and and know that one vo- there has been several elections that was won by one vote. 
Well, you know, the most recent election uh, between um, Jeffrey Rhodes and Orlando Goods, that was a uh, uh, a hard fought uh, battle. It was a good race, uh-huh. but it was won by less than a hundred votes. Yeah. So y- you can imagine if um, uh, if voters, some of the uh, felons had their voters' rights, it, h- how uh, how that could have affected you know th- not that on, election. And not only that, with Hillary Clinton, she could have won. She could have won. But there were so many people stayed home because they didn't like her. Yeah, she did a lot of things. She and Bill, mm-hmm. but. But I don't think it'll be as bad as it is now. Oh, wow. But I say this. Go ahead. Can I say this? Yes. Uh, 45, a president, uh, uh, Trump did not invent the evilness that we see portrayed now. True. He, he just gave them a reason uh, to come out with it because they feel protected. But we find out that people who, who don't look like us are killing more people that don't look like us. Wow. And see, and I want to ask you a question. Yes, sir. Because uh, you're younger than me. You're smarter than me. <laughs> no, I don't know about Why that. Why is it they always have a, a, a buyback, a gun buyback in the black community, never have it in the white community? I've never heard of a buyback in the white community. In the white community. Have you? You know, <laughs> uh, no, quite frankly. And see, uh, and but I, I say this. Too many people are killing people that look like them in our community. Uh, because you, we have a system that used to hang under the Willie Lynch theory. Mm-hmm. But now we are destroying our soldiers. Well, let me just tell you this. We don't have to kill uh, each other because they're doing it for us. That's right. We, you know, so so these, these young brothers that are out here wasting their time killing somebody else they don't have to do it they don't even have to put themselves in that jeopardy because it's being done by uh in my mind some some unscrupulous uh, law enforcement officers those that are doing that i'm just i'm beyond uh all the things that that all the excuses that are being uh, said that they need to do in order to not do that uh it's 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 just a it's a mess and and recently you know uh, very few uh, law enforcement officers are, are convicted uh, if they go before the dr- grand jury right. or the sheriff department. Absolutely. Or either the state attorney. But see, this is the key. In the old days, we would say a civil rights had been violated, violated. and then the feds would come in and investigate, and then it would be a little different. Yeah. Well, um, you know, it's not just the police officers pulling the triggers. To me, it's also the uh, state attorneys. Um, that are that are uh, uh, um, processing the, uh, the the crime, and it's the the judges that are not uh, upholding the law or uh, or hiding behind the law. I, I'm I'm just beyond all the, those things. Reverend Dixon, we're going to wrap it up because uh, Reverend Tyson had to leave, uh-huh. and I wanted to get Michelle Williams in here, um, but I know she was tied up as well. I one I want to thank her for just involving me, getting me here uh, as a part of uh, um, the 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 conversation with. With uh, Reverend Tyson and her, uh, Michelle Williams, one of our, our activists here in the Tampa Bay area, uh, and I'm glad that you were able to come on and just briefly talk about uh, what voting rights uh, restoration means to you. So, with that, uh, I'm going to you. You, you got a, some closing thoughts? Yeah, I, I would like to. Uh, I know I got the invitation to go to uh, uh, Joe Biden's wife will be here, but they asked me for twenty five hundred dollars, five hundred dollars. But I can wow. get them some votes. So I would like to get in touch with those who are working on his behalf because I think that he would be a good person to represent uh, uh, the people that, that look like us. Wow. And get him a female who can win because uh, you, it, they're going to have the – it was 20, now it's down to 10. Okay. But, but the thing about it is we need to get these candidates to talk about issues and not about each other. And see, they're giving the other party all of this dirty laundry. Mm-hmm. All they got to do is sit back. And uh, the president, he only has one person that's thinking about running against him. You know? Yeah. All right. Well, there you have it. Thank you so much, Reverend Dixon. Yes, we Pleasure sincerely nine. appreciate it. And we're going to shut it down. Peace. DJ CEO signing out. <laughs>